stop. Let's stop. This is a very, very, very special occasion. A Holy Grail box day. I'm cool with tradition, but you know what? Let's start this over again with a little bit of flavor. Hit it. with another figure review and as I mentioned earlier in the intro I had fun doing that by, by, uh, by the way um, in the intro I said this was a holy grail box day and it really really is for me um, I have one of the most elusive sought after figures ever from X plus the X plus 30 centimeter Godzilla 1992 from the Heisei film Godzilla vs. Mothra um, you know how we do this, so let's just get into the box, and then we'll get into the awesome, magnificent figure, as you see right here. Love this guy. Now, as you can see, as typical with all the other 30 centimeter boxes, wonderful artwork with the face of Godzilla here in the in the back, um, the picture of the overall figure here, right here in the inner forefront, his name Godzilla. The Japanese language title of the film, Godzilla vs. Mothra, 1992, X Plus Garage Toy. And I love the artwork. I mean, y'all already know that about me. I love the third centimeter bo um, um, artwork on the boxes. Um, just like every other third, third, third centimeter box, really. You know, with the awesome cover art here and everything. And the eagle drawing on the back. And that's it with the box, so... Let's get this out of the way and get into the figure. Wow, what an amazing figure. And let me just do a little backstory about this figure. Um, this is probably one of my um, holy grails. Um, and that's one thing about me as a collector. I don't like to say I have holy grails, um, I mean, which I do. I mean, we all do. But I don't like to say, like, I want this one. Or, like, it's like a goal for me to get. Um, because I would, I would think about that constantly. So I don't like to say I have like Holy Grails, but in, in, but basically I do. And this is one of the ones that I was really been looking for. I have been looking for, for a very, very long time. Um, I got started on the X plus train. I got, to, I got late. I came late to the X plus party. I wasn't aware of X plus to like around maybe 2000 and maybe 11, 2012, maybe. Um, ironically, this figure was, um, made in 2011. Um, I think August or September or something like that. Yeah, so this basically, this figure is four years old. And, um, I've been trying to find one for a very, very long time. Um, but by him being so, by being so rare and so sought after, he's up there in price. I mean, just like the S-Plus Titanosaurus or the S-Plus 30 centimeter 68 Angerous. Um... Or the byline table before they got reissued or whatever. He's one of the most sought after figure, figures ever uh, as far as X Plus is concerned. Um, and I've seen this guy go from $400 to $500, $600 and, and up. And and I don't mind paying a little bit more. Not more than that, but I don't mind paying a little bit more than what it really went for. Because I know it's sought after and rare. But 
even I had my limitations. Even I was like, you know what? I'm not paying that much for it. Um, so patience paid off. Fast forward a couple of weeks ago, saw one pop up on pop up on Mondo Rocke. Um, also, a special shout out to Richard Eso, Mr. Fresh Vinyl. He got his Godzilla 1992 um, in the exact same way, um, in a way. He got his, I think, like a year earlier. He got it through Mondo Rocke. And um, so, a year later, I got mine off of Mondo Rocke. It just happened to pop up. And um, I saw it, and I saw it on like a Saturday night. I was like, no way. This can't be it. Because sometimes when stuff pop up on, on Mondo Rocke, um, Madaraka.com for those who are unaware it's a Japanese website where you can um, buy Japanese figures or whatever um, so I saw one pop up there I was like no way this can't be legit you know because sometimes they'll post stuff on, on, this, on the website and 9 times out of 10 it may be in stock and or it may not be in stock what you do is you put in an order for it and then they'll it, whether you do it during business hours or not they either contact you like a day later and say whether the item is is in stock or whatever. Um, so I wasn't really sure that the item was still in stock. And I, and first of all, I was I was amazed that it was actually up there. And I was like, you know what? And for the price, it was actually a really really good deal. But even still, I was like, you know what? Let me just sleep on it. I'm not quick to just jump on things and stuff like that. You know, as a collector, you want to get the most for your money or whatever. Um, even though I know this price was not to be beaten i was like let me just sleep on it woke up the next morning it was still there and that that truly amazed me so i was like you know what i'm getting it you know this is an opportunity i took it and here it is now too much to my much to my surprise i thought this figure was going to be like used because sometimes they sell used figures you know um in, in good condition mind you but still used maybe chip paint on the toes or whatever Come to find out, this bad boy was mint. It was never opened. It was never tampered with. It was never used. It was never displayed. It was wasn't in the hands of another collector. This thing still had wrap, still still had wrap, still surrounding the box. The tape was still intact. It wasn't cut open and retaped. This bad boy was mint. And to get what I got, uh, to get to get it, um, the price that I got for it. Um, if you want to know, just. Ask in the comment section. You, you know, I, I, I said I got it for two fifty. And considering what this guy normally goes for, you can say that was a steal. That was a steal. So, um, so I'm happy. I'm really, I really am happy. And it's just, um, it goes sometimes patience. You know, um, everybody wants something, but I'll touch on that later on to the tail in the video. But that's the backstory on how, on how I got this figure. Um, but get to the figure. Absolutely amazing, awesome. I'm not going to say awesome like 15 million times like I did in my X Plus Gigantic Series G2000 video. I'm sorry. Um, I was just excited to have it, and that figure exceeded my expectations. And so this, so so, so this figure right here, it really did. It really has um, just just a cool representation of Godzilla 1992. Not one of my favorite films of all time, but I get into that later on as well. Um, but yes, Godzilla. Skin texture, tree bark skin, dark charcoal gray coloring with some white highlights um, to um, give it more character or give it more depth or give it more um, more um, believability, I guess. Um, this is one thing S Plus is prone to do. You know, they, they put highlights on their figures to give it more to give it more exuberance, to, um, to, to give it more life, you know, because if it was a solid black color, Without the highlights, it would look really dry, really. Um, and it would look right. The highlights make it come out some more. So, yes, the tree bark skin, um, dark coloring, charcoal gray with the highlights here. His toes are off-white, bone white, more of a truer white. Um, I like how it has some highlights of blackness going towards the base of the foot. Um, claws, pretty much the same way. Um and let's think about this figure as opposed to like the 89 third centimeter Godzilla, um, where his figures are kind of, or excuse me, his toes or his claws are kind of like a darker bone white, whatever. Um, it's more of a, a more, it's more of like a like a shady um, grayish color on the toes. It's still white, but still has a little bit hints of more grayness in there. Um, but the claws, as well as the dorsal plates, have more of a true white, um, as opposed to the uh, more dirty bone white coloring that you 
that you would find, that you would normally see on the um, Guzzle 89 or whatever. Um, so it's a really kind of a change of pace, really, with the coloring. And um, the pose is really cool. Perfect. And you know what? There's been a debate about this figure. Um, is it suit accurate? Is it spot on? Because X Plus has been known to take liberties with their sculpts. Like like, like, like I mentioned, the 30 centimeter Guzzle in 1989. Um, the 30 centimeter, not the 25, the 30. You can, you can argue that it, even though it looks probably 90% too accurate, there's still some things that they exaggerated as far as like the gums, maybe the way the face look or whatever. And it kind of has, and I said this before, it does have the look of the 91 in it a little bit more. In a way, it kind of looks more like the 91 and does 89. That's 89. Um, but far as this figure, um, I watched Godzilla vs. Mothra recently, yesterday as a matter of fact, and... I would say it's suit accurate to a point, and I will discuss that in the size comparisons. I'm not going to do what I normally do with the size comparison where I show you the photos and have the music in the background. I'm going to do something different with the size comparisons, so just bear with me. Um, face is absolutely ferocious looking. He looks really, really, really mean, menacing, intimidating, really awesome. Teeth sculpted really well. Um, whiteness on the teeth, a little bit yellowish, you know, as if Godzilla was eating like a crater full of butter, um, buttery popcorn. Um, tongue, um, a light pink, whatever. His eyes, his eyes have like a ye um, yellowish pupil, a uh, black pupil with, um, yellowish eyes. It has like little redness going, um, towards the edges. Um, yeah. I really like that. The eyes really just sell this figure. It really, really, really does. As a matter of fact, the face kind of does look like the 91. It does in a way. I know that 91 is my favorite suit, but I'm just going by what I see here. Um, yes. Sculpt is really, really nice. The pose is really nice. He's really, really in, in, in attack pose. With his arms more upward, it's it, it more like was like he was in the movie since he was facing two aerial opponents um, in, ba in Mothra and Batra. Um, so yeah, and I like the, uh, richness on the neck here or whatever. Um, the chest is chills up really, really, really well. It's kind of, in, it's kind of, um, deflated from the 89 or 91. Um, but you'll see that in size, size comparison later on also. Um, but yes, figure stands like 12 inches tall, 12.5 inches tall, maybe like 14, 15 inches long, 15 inches long. Um, really, really nice. I like how I like how he's standing. Where you know, no matter what angle you look at it, he looks really, really awesome, amazing. Um, so yeah, I really, really do enjoy this figure, and it has exceeded all my expectations. It really has, and it really just confirmed why I've been wanting this guy for so long. The pictures though really don't really do do these figures justice, especially this one. But we all know that it's kind of like a, a standard thing when it comes to S plus figures. And to get one that you really, really want and been trying to get for a long period of time, it's really, really cool. So, yeah, I enjoy this figure. I really do. Uh, skin texture is perfect. Claws, the, the color on the claws, um, his toes, face looks ferocious, the teeth, the mouth, the dorsal plates. I like the curvature of his tail where it's going outwards. Like I, like I mentioned before, I like how they take different um, steps or different... Um, takes when it comes to the sculpts, but especially for us a tail. It's not just a typical tail where it goes down like right here, then it goes up and goes down here. I like how, you know, it, 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 it creates uh, it creates the atmosphere of elegance and gracefulness when it comes to the tail. Um, and it gives him um, a different pose and it gives him a different look and it, it commands a different presence when he's on your shelf. And he's not really much of a shelf all, it just depends on how you position him. Um, but but because by his tails going up and outwards, you can position him better versus his tail going like straight down and straight out. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to like place figures around it. But with his tail being up with like like this, you can put him up against the wall or whatever. And he's I mean he, he's big, he's massive, and he's not much of a shelf all shelf all. It just depends on how you position him. Um, but yes, really, 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 really awesome. I love this. I love this figure. I, I, you know, it's just a, I'm glad I got it. I'm, I'm really glad I got it. So, like I mentioned earlier, um, it's been a debate about whether this figure is more so suit accurate, um, 
um, than anything else. And actually, I have another Gosling Max 92 that I would showcase for you in the first size comparison. So let's see how this Gosling stacks up with the Billiken built-up kit of Gosling Max 92. Let's check that out. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, two Gosling 1992s. You know, of course, the X Plus. And here I have a built-up Billiken kit um, of Gosling Max 92. Of course, um, for those who not not familiar with it, Billiken is a model kit maker that have made other Gosling incarnations like Gosling 1965, Gosling 1975, a Mechanicon, Jet Jaguar, um, who else they made? Oh, a Gosling 1968 or whatever. And in, in many respects, sometimes the Billiken stacks up better for its suit accuracy um, against X+. Plus. And I think, going by what I see here, um, Okay, hold on. Let, let, let me just say this. Of course, with the Billiken, you know, um, it's pretty much almost the same sculpt in a way. Uh, his arms are more more downward than the uh, X Plus version. And his mouth actually is articulated. Let, articulate it. It'll stay up, hopefully. If not, I have to, there you go. Um, so you get two different perspectives from Gosling 1992. Um, same thing as far as with the dorsal plates. The dorsal plates look almost identical. Let's just see how it looks. Yeah, there you go. Yes, the dorsal plates look yeah, they look basically identical, um, except for the coloring. Now, with the model kit, you know, it's just it's up to the um, to the artist's interpretation. Um, but I think the artist did a good job. I got it off of eBay for a good price, um, so I didn't build it and paint it myself. For those who are wondering, but I think he did a good, 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 good job. Um, but the dorsal plates look exactly the same, um, just the coloring is different. Um, the tails, the tails are kind of, are, are kind of different, although they're kind of going like in the same direction. Um, I think the Abilicans uh, is a little bit longer than the S Plus version. Um, and it's actually more thicker at the tip as well, as far as the S Plus is more pointed in a way. Um, so they really kind of share like the same respects when it comes to the dorsal plates and the tails. Um, but as far as like the face, uh, you know, I get to that last, but, um, let's see. Um, the toes. Kind of the same in a way. Um, the Billiken is more of a pointy end, but the X Plus is more rounded at the tip. Um, the abdomen here, pretty much the same. Um, the musculature on the legs are pretty much the same. Um, at this point, Godzilla, Godzilla was getting to be a fatty, but you'll see that in the next size comparison. Um, claws pretty much the same. Sharp claws. I mean, I, I think the edge goes to the X Plus with more sharper claws. Um, so the originals on the neck, pretty much the same right here. Um, the chest, um, this is where I believe the X Plus took its liberties, right here, look at the chest. And I'm gonna just say this right now, nothing against X Plus, cause I love the 92, I've been look looking for it for a long, long time, but I would have to say, as far as suit accuracy goes, the 92 Billiken kit gets it. And I think what happened with the X Plus one, this is just my theory, just my theory. I think what happened was, I think that X Plus not only combined um, the look of the suit, but it also combined the look as far as the facial features of the um, puppet that was used in the film for Godzilla's facial expressions. Cause now mind you in the suit, they couldn't make Godzilla's like eyes move or eyebrows move or his mouth move. I think his mouth could move, but he couldn't do like more, um, more expressions with his face, more articulated expressions, like a little snarl here and there, or his eyes move, his eyebrows move, or whatever. So I think what X Plus did, they combined the suit with the animat animatronic puppet um, that was used for Godzilla's um, close-up facial expression. That's why I think what happened, because like I mentioned before on Facebook, um, Godzilla 1992 from X Plus looks good from certain angles. He looks, he looks not good, but he, he does look good, but he looks suit accurate for certain angles. But with the Billiken, he looks perfect suit accuracy wise from any angle you look at it. Um, from the face, from the body or whatever. And like I said, nothing against 92 X Plus, but I think the Billiken nails it better uh, for a suit accuracy. That doesn't mean that the X Plus 92, I'm not selling that one short by any means, none whatsoever. Um, but I think as far as like who gets, who gets the win here, suit accuracy goes, Mr. Billiken.
And um, like I said, I think they combine with the animatronic puppet of the face of Godzilla with the suit um, to um, form their vision of this figure here, which is a good thing. I mean, um, I, I think it's really good, but to say that it's hundred percent suit accurate is is not it's not it's not correct for as X plus. It looks good, but when you compare it with the Billiken or with the other model kit that's more suit accurate like that, I think you notice the difference here. All right, so that's the first size comparison of Godzilla 1992, Billiken, and X Plus. So I'm gonna need more room for this next size comparison. So let's just change locations and you'll see exactly what I mean. All right, let's go. Okay, people, this is the last size comparison of the Godzilla 1992. So I figured I'd bring up other Godzilla incarnations courtesy of X Plus from the Heisei era. Um, I don't have the Godzilla 1984, but since, um, the 1989 is basically the variation that was used in all of the remaining Heisei films as far as the suit's concerned. That's, that's why, um, uh, I'm not really bothered by me omitting the Godzilla 1984. So let's just start off with the 25 centimeter Godzilla 1989, the Yuji Sakai Godzilla, Godzilla 1991, excuse me. Of course, the Godzilla 1992, as well as the Gigantic Series running Godzilla. And as you can see, they're the evolution of the suits when it came to the Heisei. Now, to start off with the Godzilla 1989, really awesome, powerful suit, as you can see with the buffed up chest and everything, uh, ferocious face, claws, everything popping, good. Then when they went to 1991, they increased the size of the chest um, with a more mean looking face. Um, even with his mouth open or closed, doesn't matter. 91 just, to me, has the most ferocious looking face out of all the Heisei Godzillas. Um, nothing really changed as far as the 89 to 91. They just changed the facial features and, like I said, gave him more of a buffed up chest. Going to 1992, um, and as you can see how it's kind of different with 92. The chest, like I said, is kind of inflated. It's not as buffed up as the 91 or whatever and the neck kind of got kind of got thicker although the neck is more defined here with the ridges right here at the front um the 91 is um defined too but it's not as defined as the neck of the 92 and so forth um but like i said it's it, it kind of got thicker kind of got wider we came to the 92 and then of course leading to the finale with the with the burning godzilla and as you can see, he has hips for days, thighs for days. And um, of course, they increased the dorsal plates as the Heisei films went on. They increased the number of the dorsal plates on the back, um, where it kind of crept up. As you can see, like the 91, it kind of crept up from the middle of the back all the way. It, it, it kind of it kind of starts at the middle of the back and goes downward, where it shows how long his neck really is. But there's not many large dorsal plates on the back. The 91 is pretty much the same way. Um, but for us, the 92, as well as going with the um, gigantic series, or the 95, 94, 93. Um, and as you can see, they have uh, a large amount of dorsal plates here on the back, so. But that's pretty much the evolution of the Heisei Godzilla starting from 1989 going to 1995. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it with size comparisons. I know I've been drowning them a lot because of this uh, figure, but hey, I just want to give you a good look on how the suit changed. Of course, like I said, X Plus took liberties when it came to the 92, but it's pretty much the same. So, so that's pretty much it with the size comparisons and the evolution of the Heisei suit. That's it. All right, let's go upstairs and let's finish off this review.
folks, I'm back, and now let's finish up this review of the Godzilla 1992. Hey, that rhymes, whatever. Now, um, of course, like I mentioned earlier, this is from his appearance in Godzilla vs. Mothra, um, the fourth film in the Heisei series. Um, and, but before I get into that, I know you're wondering why is Angerus in Godzilla 71 um, a part of this? Um, I will touch on that towards the very, very end of the video. But I'm just going to have him here for the time being. But as far as Godzilla vs. Mothra, um, I don't really have much to say as far as the movie is concerned. Um, I would just like to say, or what I want to say, is the fact that it's probably one of my least favorite Godzilla films. Um, it's probably one of, it's probably my least favorite of the Heisei series. You know what Space Godzilla is. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy the film. I enjoy the film for what it is, and to me, it's just a typical Godzilla film. There's nothing exciting or something special about the plot or the story on how um, the events that culminated in the monsters coming together in the film was special. To me, it wasn't really it wasn't really that special. Um, the only probably special thing about the film is probably Batra, um, the inclusion of Batra into the um, into the mix or whatever, and and to be perfectly honest with you, um, I've been hearing a lot as far as like people who don't like Mothra or don't care too much for Mothra that Mothra um, was showcased a lot during the Godzilla film series, and I agree with it, agree with agree with that um, to a point, and I think that this film is a testament to that. Um, I don't think Mothra was needed in this movie. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I would have preferred just seeing Godzilla um, taking on Batra. Um, because Batra is a very cool monster. Um, the concept was very, very cool. Um, but, which goes back to one of the things I don't like about this film is the fact that during the course of the movie, Batra kind of got, like, less impressive the more that we saw him. Um, because Batra was a, was a formidable opponent for Godzilla in the film. Um, the larva form. But once he transformed into his aerial form, um, he just got less impressive. He wasn't that, he wasn't that, um, as powerful as he was in his larval form. Um, which is, which is kind of a strange dichotomy because in Mothra's case, you, you can basically argue, or you basically say that Mothra may be strong as a caterpillar, but when she transforms into her aerial form, she's even more powerful. But with Batra, I think it's the exact opposite. Um, he was very powerful in his larval form, and once he transformed to his aerial form, it just he just didn't seem that all powerful. Um, but like I said, the story is okay. It's not anything exciting, at least from my perspective. It just they tried to, I guess, make it interesting. But coming from, um, but coming off for at least uh, far as having Godzilla and Monster in the same film, there have been other entertaining uh, films. Uh, far more entertaining than Godzilla vs. Mothra. Of course, Mothra vs. Godzilla, you know, I'm going to say that. Um, it's not because I'm biased towards that film. It's just that everything about that film, from the score, the, mu uh, the music score, um, the direction, um, the story, the monsters, the suits, the special effects, everything about that film was in perfect alignment, perfect synergy, if you will, to create the, the perfect, if not one of the best Godzilla films ever in the franchise. And I think coming off the uh, coming off from that, or coming um, or being compared to that, because a lot of folks mistaken Martha versus Godzilla with Godzilla versus Martha, which is why I believe they tagged on when it was released to the states on VHS and DVD. Godzilla and Martha: The Battle for Earth, which doesn't really really make sense. Uh, but to the casual viewer, some folks probably will not know the difference between Martha versus Godzilla or Godzilla versus Martha unless you watch the film. So that's why I think they. Um, took that route with the whole name change. Like I said, Godzilla and Martha the Battle for Earth doesn't really doesn't really make much sense. I mean it does considering what the plot is about. But like I said, the plot is so loose and it's not it's not anything spectacular. That if you just remove all that, it, it really is one of those one of those movies where you really want to skip through the human parts and get to the monster parts. Um which I, which I think is a shame because there have been great Godzilla films that had a great um engaging, interesting human story. And they had the monster action to counteract that or, or, or provide a perfect balance. But in this film, you want to just speed through the human parts and get to the monster parts. And um, But I will say the final battle or the final scene where all the monsters converge at the very end, 
is very, very cool. You have Mothra and Batra battling each other. Then you have Godzilla who shows up on the, on the scene who basically says, I don't like either one of you, so I'm going to take you both out. Then Godzilla fights Batra, then he like subdues him. Then Martha jumps in and he subdues her. Then Batra and Martha come together and say, you know what, let's just take out Godzilla and the two of them against, against Godzilla. So the whole overall um, fight scene at the end is, 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 is well worth it. Here's one thing about the Heisei films. I think with this film, it kind of took a uh, it kind of took a nosedive as far as the Heisei films are concerned. Um, I don't like the fact they changed Godzilla's war. I know that's kind of um, a small thing to really nitpick about, but it's just one of the things I don't like. I mean, they changed it from the dark, aggressive war he had in the first three, three Heisei films to the high-pitched show of war that we have heard through the majority of the show of films. And considering how this Godzilla is 100 meters tall, he's more powerful than the show of version, it just, his, when he does that show of war, it just doesn't seem right. Um, it doesn't sound right coming from this Godzilla. So that's why I kind of I kind of don't like the fact that they changed Godzilla's war and they kept it changed for the remainder of the Heisei series. But um, but it brings me to my uh, uh, other point. It's like, even though I don't like some of the things about the film, I can't bring myself to hate this film. I really don't hate any Godzilla film, to be honest with you. Um, it doesn't mean because I'm a, I'm a fan. It doesn't mean that I look for things to like. No. Um, it's just that some things I do find entertaining. But I don't have to like the entire film to suggest that I hate the film. No, I just, there's some things I like about it, sometimes I don't, but it's, at the end of the day, I'm still entertained. Even Godzilla Final Wars, which y'all probably know is not my favorite Godzilla film at all, or Space Godzilla, but still, at the end of the day, I find, um, I find it entertaining, find it entertaining in certain respects, and Godzilla vs. Monster is no different, so. I really do enjoy, enjoy the film, some parts. I mean, it is what it is, but it's not high on my, um, on my um, top 10 list of Godzilla film. But it was good for what it is. So so that's it for like Godzilla vs. Mothra. Hopefully, as far as the figure is concerned, this is the only figure that we have from that film. Hopefully, we'll get more um, figures from that film. Um, of course, Mothra and Batra um, in both forms, the larval and the aerial form, or Imago, or whatever you call it. Uh, but out of the two, I would like to have Batra. I would like to see Batra first. Because um, we already got like two versions of Martha, or three if you count the X Plus USA um, resin one. So, Batra would be good in larval form or aerial form. Um, but personally, I would like to see um, a Batra um, larval form come first. Either 30 or 25 or whatever. Hopefully, we'll see that in the next um, couple of years. With the new Godzilla film coming out, Shin Gojiro, Shin Godzilla, and the new Gamma film. I'm sure we're going to see a whole lot of bunch of um, new products, new monsters that we've not seen before from X Plus come come to the market and hopefully we'll see a Batra or Martha or 1992. So, um, but before I finish this, let me just talk about why these figures are here. Angry 1968 and Godzilla 1971. Of course, with the Godzilla 1992. Um, like I said, I got started with the X Plus. I got it on X Plus um, kind of late. Um, like, you know, like a few years before, uh, a few years after they started creating these wonderful figures, and I was and I wasn't aware of that. Um, so since then, these figures have been really sought after and really, really high, uh, highly valued. And I didn't think I was ever gonna get my hands on these figures: the 36 centimeter Angerus, the 92, the 71, and through patience and determination and just knowing where to look and being at the right place at the right time. I was able to accumulate them, which basically what I'm about to say right now to all my fellow collectors out there, new ones as well as some old heads out there, you know. And one thing about being a collector is it's not more so about getting the figure. It's kind of like the road to getting uh, getting that figure. I'm going to plug uh, Godzilla Fan Freaks, Everett Grondon. He did a wonderful video on, on his Holy Grail Titanosaurus and um, the trials and tribulation that you go to to get that figure. Um, so I highly recommend you go check that out. But I'm going to echo some of the stuff he said in that video because it all applies to the same principle. Just never give up. Whatever you want, just be patient. And don't try to buy anything on impulse. Of course, these figures are going to be highly valued. Um, of course, with the anger, it's going to be reissued real soon. So he won't be that highly valued. But as far as 92 and it's 71 or whatever, or just any figure out there, Mets Plus that's really saw after that's rare that, don't, that, that you don't see, on the marketplace anymore they're gonna be high high in value um so i just say just be persistent and be patient um 
like I said, I didn't think I was ever going to get my hands on three of these figures, let alone one of them. Um, but I was able to, able to get get them, you know. And just like I said, just look around. Um, try um, other alternative marketplaces to go to. Other than eBay, you got Baye. You got Mandarake. Um, you got Ami Ami. You got um, Hobby Search. Hobby Link Japan or whatever. Um, there's so many alternatives to try to get a figure, get the figure that you want. Or well, check out the X Plus Collectors Facebook group, and you you'll meet a whole lot of people who may be selling some of their figures or whatever. There's always different ways to get what you want uh, without having you having to break your bank account to get it. And and that's my advice: just keep on keeping on, persevere. You know. And I always tell this to everybody who uh, who wants a figure, who who uh, who, 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 who who really want wanted one and missed out on getting one. Um, it's not a question of if you get it, it's when you get it. You, you just have to be patient. And you could be like how, how I was, just happen to be on Mandarake or Bayi one day, and boom, your um, your dream figure's right there. And um, so it's, it's really all about you. And I mean, you have to do, do the legwork to get it. I mean, of course, it's, it's not gonna, gonna happen overnight. I mean, it, it, it varies, you know, it's just, uh, that, that is the way how this hobby works, you know. You may come across a dream figure of yours today and miss out on getting it, and then another one may not pop up till, till like another year or so. It's just there's no way to um, gauge these things. But if you believe it and you know you want it and you persevere and be persistent, like I said, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So, And I'm living proof of that because with this guy right here, I didn't think I ever was going to ever find one let alone find one that's in mint condition. So if it can happen for me, I know it can happen for you. All right, so that basically concludes my review of the Godzilla 1992 30 centimeter X Plus figure. From X Plus, from the film, Godzilla vs. Mothra 1992. Check out the Facebook groups I'm about to mention. Um, Toho Kaja Union, the Godzilla Collectors Facebook group, the X Plus Collectors Facebook group, Sci-Fi Labyrinth, and the Kaiju Brotherhood. And also hit up kaijuaddicts.com for all things X Plus for future past. Um, everything devoted to X Plus, check out kaijuaddicts.com. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm happy. I really am. Um, this has been a, a, a wonderful day, um, a wonderful box day. And um, I'm sure the future will get better. So like I said, I'm a fellow collectors out there. Be persistent, never give up, and you'll get what's coming to you and what you really want. All right. I thank y'all for watching. I'm sorry it's been like a long video, but hey, I'm really excited and I'm, I'm very happy to have this figure. And um, oh, as far as the issue on this, of this figure, um, since recently um, it was announced that the diamond deal, as far as like them bringing Godzilla figures of himself, kind of like fell through, and we may get new sculpts. That's kind of like in limbo right now. Um, I don't, I, I don't know about. Um, they could reissue him from X Plus or whatever. I mean, but until then, you just have to just do what I did. Just, just, just keep looking between the Japanese websites, eBay, or whatever. And if it's worth it to you, I say get it. It is worth the investment. So hopefully, X Plus will reissue it sometime in the future. Um, if they know what's good for business, I'm sure they will. Um, because this is really, really an awesome piece. Even though it may be off on the face or whatever, it still is an awesome piece nonetheless. All right, but thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I will see y'all again on the next figure and movie review. All right, y'all take it easy. Go!